Hey everybody. First I want to say, there are some things that I know that I don't know that you want to know. So if you have a question, just ask, and if I think it's a good question, I will definitely make a video on it, and this is what I'm doing right now. Today's lesson is on the introduction to sports shooting in daylight. This is a very, very easy thing to screw up because there are a few nuances and settings that you'll have to know to have some success. The first thing that you're going to want to do is to make sure that you have a zoom lens. If you're on a budget, the 70 to 300 is an affordable kit lens that is a great starter sports lens. The lens should have a focal length, in my opinion, over 200 millimeters. So 70 to 300 is pretty good. Uh, Tamron makes a great 18 to 270. I like to shoot with a 100 to 400. It's a little bit more expensive, but you're going to need that extra reach to get close to your subjects. Let's talk about camera settings real quick. You're going to want to shoot on your TV mode if you're shooting on Canon or your S mode if you're shooting on Nikon. This is your shutter priority setting. I recommend starting off with about one one thousandth of a second with an ISO of 400. Now if you do this, the camera is going to make exposure setting changes to your aperture and it should be bouncing around 8 to 10 or 11 if you are shooting in broad daylight. So between a fast shutter speed of one one thousandth of a second and an aperture, a bit smaller aperture, you're going to get a deeper depth of field. It's going to allow you to freeze the action. Let's talk about your focus modes. The most common mistake I see with beginning sports shooters is that they are using the wrong focus mode. On Canon cameras, you're going to want to be shooting on AI servo, not one shot, not AI focus. One shot is really for portraits, and the camera believes it needs to get a focus lock on a non-moving subject. AI servo is a predictive focus, which means the camera has the ability to predict where a moving subject will be, and it's going to let you take the picture whether it's in focus or not. Now, what this means is that some of the shots are going to be out of focus, but what you will notice is the majority of your shots should be on focus if you're doing it right. Now, let me give you a quick tip on focusing. Uh, most cameras will have a halfway depression, which is telling the camera to focus, and a full depression that will actually take the picture. But what you want to do is practice pushing that button halfway down, and if you are on the AI servo mode, you should feel the lens adjusting its focus, and when you're ready to take the picture, then push it down all the way. Let's talk about your drive mode. If you're shooting on a Canon camera, you are going to want to shoot on your high-speed burst. It's typically designated with several boxes, and on some, some cameras, you're going to have the letter H. That is your frames per second. On the Canon 7D, for example, that's eight frames per second. So if you're taking that shot and you're holding the shutter button down, really fast, eight frames in one second is going to help you catch this chaos. That's the thing with sports shooting is there's a lot of things you can't really predict. So sports shooting requires you to take a lot of extra shots, which means typically I like to shoot on JPEG. I don't re really shoot in RAW simply because the raw files are bigger, they take longer to write to the card, and you can, you can you know, fill your buffer up and the camera won't operate. So I do shoot on JPEG, and I also use the spot metering mode, which measure, measures light from the center part of the lens. Now the reason why I do that is because sometimes I get a lot of highlights, or maybe the sun's coming in, and it changes the exposure settings up. If you are shooting outdoor sports, my top tips are, Get a zoom lens, something over 200 millimeters. Shoot on shutter priority with a speed of at least one one thousandth of a second. Have your ISO on 400. I like the high speed burst mode for frames per second, maximum frames per second. I shoot on the AI servo mode. That's really, really important. It's probably the most important thing right there. I like the spot metering mode. And a few other tips I can give you is that the further away you are from your subject, the more hand movement is going to come into play. So if you're shooting something very far away and your, your camera moves just a little teeny bit, you're probably going to need either a faster shutter speed or a tripod or a monopod. Any movement is amplified with distance. 
sometimes when I'm shooting uh, sports, especially of uh, small children playing football or soccer, another thing that I do like to do is try to get the camera lower than the kids playing. It makes them appear larger and it's more interesting, I think, and more fun. Another good trick is that if you are shooting low, if you hold the camera with both hands, you should be able to use your elbows to help steady it by placing them on your knees. Now, indoor sports shooting for basketball, maybe women's volleyball, indoor soccer, that is a whole different ball game and it typically requires a very wide aperture zoom lens. These can be pretty expensive. You can either do that or you're going to have to bump your ISO up. It's a whole different can of worms. We'll have to cover that in a different video. In any event, I hope that answers your question about shooting sports in daylight. If you have a question about photography that I haven't answered yet on my channel, just send me a question. If I like it, I will definitely do a video on it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you found this video helpful, you may be interested in my new DVD, Advanced Photography Techniques, which contains over three hours of awesome tips and tricks that will help you take your game to the next level. It can be ordered from the following link.